Good morning, everyone. Am I on? Not yet. Oh, now I am. There's the sound of the microphone. Let's everybody stand up. Let's thank God for this beautiful rain. It was a little, little hard, but you know, we needed it. So it was wonderful. Things are greening up. My yard doesn't look so striped anymore. Anyway, now let's hit it. Oh, we're not singing. We're gonna sing from our hearts. sing and shout it out loud. You guys aren't looking in that back row. They are 100% entertaining. Let's welcome Cindy. Good morning, good morning. And I think if my pen just dropped because I'm moving Reverend Patty's stuff so I can see my stuff. <laughs> That's all right. All right, we'll give one more chance. What are those words? What do we just All right. Now I heard lots of energy there. And we know Reverend Patty likes lots of energy too. What, when we say these things over here. So we want God to know we really believe what we're saying. And so we start with our statement of faith. Uh, well, actually first, welcome to Unity Center in Milwaukee, those who are here and those who are on the internet. Um, and we practice the basic five principles of unity here. Main one being God's in charge, folks, and everything is good. It's in a big summary. So can we join in this statement of faith, please? There is only one presence and one power in the universe. And in my life, God, the good omnipotence. And as we join in our affirmation, thank you, God that we have come to this place to release the past, celebrate the present and embrace the future in love, peace, harmony, and prosperity. And as we look forward to a new minister coming here to help deliver God's message to us and continue our faith building, 
we want to affirm our congregational affirmation. So we at the Unity Center are a loving, diverse, inclusive, spiritual community who come together to demonstrate and live the teachings of Jesus Christ by listening, learning, and empowering ourselves and others. And for prayer requests today, we ask that you just give a first name and the desired outcome. We don't pray for illnesses. We don't pray for disease or any negativity. We affirm what we want as a result. Denise. Terry for healing. Diane for healing. Norma for healing. Again, for healing. What up for healing? I will. Susan. Can it, Sister Kennan? Somebody else I had on my list. Yes. Grandpa Skinner strength. Any other hands that I'm not seeing? Uh, yes. Jerry and Don for birthdays. See, last week I put everybody on one sheet of paper and I should have split the healing. And although I'm writing this big, so. All right. Well, I'm going to give me a chance. Celia, real and authentic friend. That's good, that's good. All right, <laughs> just making <drinking> sure. <laughs> One week we were here and everybody had to tell me what it was because we had a bright sunshine coming in here. <laughs> There's sometimes advantages to the cloudiness. There's always advantages to everything. Everything is good, as we said earlier. So I ask that we take this into prayer time. If you wish to close your eyes or extend your hands to join all these in, we appreciate it. Or just so you're comfortable joining in the prayers as well. Father, Mother, God, we ask you, and we affirm knowing that all that we ask is already done. 
We know these prayers. And yet we do voice them more for ourselves than for you. We ask healing specifically for Anna, Morgan, Jim, Terry, Diane. And we have several other folks asking, we're asking for their healing as Norma, Lori, Jack, Ken, Rhoda, Arla. We know that their healing is already done. We know that it is quick. It is as it is needed to be. Sometimes that's not quick. Sometimes that we forget that it's in your timing. And we know that it is all for the greatest and highest good of those involved. We also thank you and affirm for Anne and her family and the loss of the father and the sister that the family may find comfort in the memories, in knowing that their connection to their relatives, to their loved ones, will always be with them and will take them forward. And that those lessons they will be able to take on to others in their life and share. We ask for Grandpa Skinner and for Jim to have their healing, uh, excuse me, their strength, for Charlie to get strength and endurance as well. Very often that strength is more than we think it is. It's not necessarily a physical strength. Sometimes it requires mind and spiritual healing and strength as well. So we affirm that they have the strength that they need. We thank you, God, that Jerry and Don feel very blessed on their birthday this week. That they have the people they would like around them to celebrate it. And we know that Sierra has her education in front of her and she'll be headed back to school. We affirm that she will attract authentic and real friends in her life going forward and at school. Again, we thank you, God, for granting already these prayers. We also thank you for any prayers that were not voiced here today. The people, the places, the situations that we were not able to voice, but we hold dearly in our hearts. We ask this to the name and nature of our master teacher, Jesus the Christ. And all God's people say, amen. And so it is. Okay. I did not ask someone to read the daily word. Is there someone who, who volunteered that I didn't know or would like to read the daily word? Please do. Joanne? Good morning. The message for today is on loving. I am a loving, caring presence. Just as the sun shines on everyone and everything, I am a loving presence to everyone I meet. My kind words, welcoming smile, and compassionate actions all spring from the love that is part of my divine identity. Being a loving presence draws me closer to God and to all people. I want to share the love I have known throughout the seasons of my life at heights of triumphs and joy and depths of loss and suffering. God is love, and so am I. No matter who I meet or what they're going through, I am loving. I bring support, kindness, solace, and comfort and share them lavishly without thought of reciprocity. <laughs> that means getting back. I am the hands and heart of God in this world. 
and from Romans 13, verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. And so it is. Thank you, Joanne. And I did not mention that we do have a prayer box for those who don't know it. And anyone who, wanna, who needs a prayer that's from home, you're welcome to call that in. It goes into our prayer box. It gets prayed over for the next 30 days here on our Thursday morning prayer service. And then goes on to the Unity Center worldwide and gets prayed for another 30 days. You're welcome to have that as well. So we would like to welcome up Susan Larkin for some wonderful music for us this morning. This song is called, Is Your Heart Full of Hope? And I wrote it when I was really sad. <laughs> I needed to cheer up. Is your heart full of hope? Is it, is it appropriate that I stand there so the TV thing's on or does it matter? Sorry. Is your heart full of hope? Can your eyes really see what your life will be like? Can you really be that free? Is your heart full of hope? Is your heart full of hope? Is your heart full of hope? Are you ready to be just a few steps higher than you already see? Is your heart full of hope? Is your heart full of hope? Is your heart full of hope? Can you visualize the best? Are you really ready? Can you give up the rest? Is your heart full of hope? Is your heart full of hope? Is your heart full of hope? Can you carry it through? See a new solution and know that it's true. Is your heart full of hope? Is your heart full of hope? Is your heart full of hope? Can you hold that sweet scene? Try hard and know it. Your love will fly free. Is your heart full of hope? Is your heart full of hope? Is your heart full of hope? Can your eyes really see? what your life will be like can you really be that free is your heart full of hope is your heart full of hope is your heart full of hope thank you susan and we have from across the border, but we have nothing against her for that. <laughs> we, 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 please welcome Reverend Patty Pippia for her resume. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, across the border, I swam here, you know. My God, is there enough rain out there? Again, I walked out and I looked in my backyard and I said, man, I need to get some koi fish or something. There's just puddles and ponds all over. Well, I'm here. Um, I apologize for not being here last week, my third Sunday as always, you know, that I'm here at Unity in Milwaukee. But it was, um, uh, there was a patient of mine that died during COVID. And I promised the family, they asked me if I would do the, her memorial service. And it uh, ends up that it was last week that they could get it scheduled. And, and I want you to tell you, it was beautiful. Uh, it was at the Botanical Gardens in Glencoe because her mom was an advocate uh, gardener. 
So, and I just, I, I thought about all of us and about how our minds are a garden, which I think I've talked about, but I'll get a little bit more into that gardening of the mind and the gardening of the heart, because it's part of us building our intimate relationship with God. If we don't have a relationship with God, what do we have? Are we happy? Are we sad? Are we joyful? Do we know what laughter is? You know, how do you build your relationship with God? You know, I don't know if you noticed it throughout the Bible. When Jesus went places, there was three disciples that followed him. He always had them or he called them with. And it was John, Peter, and um, James. Peter is faith right? He represents faith. So Jesus was always bringing his spiritual faculty of faith with him. James is wisdom. So he was always aware to tap into his wisdom. And then John, love. Isn't that interesting? So I think that was an example for us that when we get up and do our day, that we have to have love, faith, and wisdom. And to call it forth through us as us, to ask it to guide us and direct us in the ways that we need to be guided and directed and inspired throughout the day. Am I right? All right, this is the beginning of building a relationship. And sometimes things need to be repeated and repeated over in truth until we really get it, where it is ingrained in every cell and fiber of our being, just as Jesus did. When he got aggravated, when he got tired, what did he do? He went away. He went away from the crowds to rebuild himself. Because I don't know, when, when I'm tired, I'm cranky. And I can get real ugly. You know, there's no Christ energy coming through me if you're, you know, ticking me off. So I have to learn about taking care of myself so that I can be fully present for the people that are in my life, whether it's family, friends, a stranger, you know, the, the grocery uh, person who's throwing my fresh fruits and vegetables uh, as though they were bowling balls down the um, con conveyor. Easy. I pick those out. I'm paying for them. I want them without bruises, you know. So you understand what I'm saying. So do we have to wait for something bad to happen in our lives, to start talking to Jesus, to start talking to God? No, we really don't. Yeah, we sort of wait, you know, until something blows up and then we're like, oh God, please help me, help me, God, help me. Who's the first person we call on when things go wrong? Oh God, am I right? So how about when things go really great and we go, oh God, thank you so much for this bounty. Thank you, God, so much for this good. Thank you, God, for this great weather. Thank you, God, for giving me the right words to say to that person. Thank you, God, for me being fully present for that person. Have you noticed in your life how sometimes people are watching TV and they're on their cell phones at the same time. I question myself going, how could you be present? How can you be really valuing what you think you wanna watch, but they're games, they're playing games while they're watching TV. You know, it's, we can't serve two masters is the point I'm trying to bring up, is, is that we have to practice the presence of God. And, you know, we have to practice the presence of Jesus. I know some people got issues with Jesus, but that's your problem. 
I'm sorry, it really is. This is a man that came and walked this earth so that we can have life more abundantly. If you have bad thoughts about Jesus or just, I don't even know how to explain it. Some issues about Jesus, you have to ask yourself, why do you have those issues? Where did they come from? And how can I heal them? Most of the time, people have an issue with Jesus because church gave them a bad exclamation or, a, yeah, exclamation, of, not exclamation, um, explanation. Thank you very much about who and what Jesus is. I always love to refer to Jesus as my way show and my comforter. I don't get into too much of Jesus's blood bleeding all over me. I just can't, but I don't have to. I have choices in my mind about what thoughts I'm going to think. What I do think is I see the energy of Jesus showering down upon me. It doesn't have to be blood like some churches think. And some churches teach that Jesus died for our sins. No, Jesus resurrected to show us the way that we can overcome. But his whole ministry for three years was about how we can build our relationship with God, have an intimate relationship with God. So when we're in the midst of fear, do we stop ourselves and say, oh, wow, what triggered off that fear in me? Or do we get all caught up in our fear, which really means false evidence appearing real? What set off that fear inside of us? Where did it come from? I procrastinate at doing my taxes. Because of fear. I just figured out why I have such a fear about doing my taxes. You know what that you want to know what the fear is? I'll be happy to share it with you. Is that I'm afraid I'm going to do something wrong. Mark something down wrong. Or I'm not going to put something down that I need to put down. So now that I got that out of the way. My next weekend is about doing my two years of taxes. Because I had to let go of what was blocking me from doing what I need to do. I'm blocking my own prosperity. I'm not being a good steward of my money. Do you understand what I'm saying? So for us to have a deep and intimate relationship with God, we got to put the brakes on and discover why we're fearing things, doubting things, feeling insecure, feeling not good enough, because in unity, we believe in cause and effect. So we have the effect. So are we looking and searching to heal the cause of the effect? Am I making sense, folks? All right. But we don't, why don't we stop? Either we're too scared or we don't want to look at ourselves or we just forget to bring Jesus or God, Holy Spirit into the situation. We can ask over and over throughout the day. God never gets tired of us saying, help me. God, I need your assistance. God, can you pave the way? God, can you give me the inspiration that I need, the motivation that I need to get this done? Give me the right words. We're in a, you know, in unity years ago, I don't know what the, what's going on in, in unity now. All I know is I teach the Fillmore teachings. 
That's all I know that I do. That's all I want to do is teach Charles and Myrtle Fillmore's teachings because that's who made me who I am today. Because I know that all works. I, I don't want my life sugar-coated. We sugarcoat everything in our lives. And that is not building our relationship with God. Everything's fine. Everything's good. Oh, it's divine law in action. I'm waiting on God's will. You know what? Those are called metaphysics. Metaphysics. You're hiding behind something to avoid you looking at yourself. You should be happy to look at yourself and you know why? Because you are a child of God. You are a divine heir to the kingdom. You are worthy to have good. Jesus said, I came so that you can have life abundantly. I really think that was his mission statement, don't you? I came so that you can have life abundantly. And I was sharing with Susan, I used to love reading Daily Word, but I don't know for somehow, Jesus is not mentioned in here very often. I'm sorry. You know, I'm really sorry that's happened. Makes me sad. You go back to the archives, of daily word and Jesus and Jesus Christ is mentioned every single day. So whatever your issue is, maybe that you have with Jesus or Jesus Christ, get over it, heal it, move on. That is your brother. That is your brother. I ask Jesus every time my way shower. I love the way shower name. He's my way shower because that's what he did. He showed all of us the way. He gave us the spiritual tools, the spiritual laws. Are we building consciousness? You know, years ago in Unity, I think I started in 1980. That's how long I've been in unity. All you heard about was building consciousness, building consciousness. How do you build your consciousness with God? How do you build your consciousness with Jesus? It's by having a relationship. How do you have a relationship? Is by inviting the presence of God, the presence of Holy Spirit, whatever word is good to you that you feel comfortable in, Pull it in, call it in, call it forth from you because it's not just out here, it's within here. And Paul wrote, the Christ in you is your hope of glory. Are we acting Christ-like? The Christ is the only begotten son of God and it's within all of us. Jesus said, these things that I do, you shall do and even greater. Don't you want to know what's greater after the ascension? Don't you? I mean, I'm curious. Yeah. How are we going to know that if we're not practicing the presence of God? And that's really what it boils down to in our lives in, in regards to building that intimate relationship with God. Sometimes if I remember when I'm taking the dishes out of the dishwasher, because it's not my favorite job, I go, I have to remind myself, you know what? In this plate is God. God's food was placed on this plate and I put it away. Practicing the presence. I think there's a book called Brother Lawrence. He was a monk and he was a kitchen uh, chef. And he practiced the presence of Jesus and God by affirming the presence of God in everything, calling it forth. Could you imagine the consciousness on this man?
Remember what's in your consciousness and what's in your heart is a reflection out here. So if your life is a disaster, then you've got a lot of disaster going on inside. Cause and effect, cause and effect. You know, as I come here once a month, I'm gonna start teaching more and more of the Bible because it seems like we've gotten away from the Bible stories. And Jesus taught parables because he wanted to make people think. He wanted them to walk away and think about the story and how it's related to them and God. So let me ask you, what do you do when fear comes up inside of you? I'm planting that seed inside of all your heads right now. So when you're fearing something, doubting something, feeling insecure about something, I want you to just stop and breathe in and out. God is, I am. God is. Where did this come from? It could be old time memories from childhood, from grammar school and college, just living life in your marriage, because each and every one of us is good enough to have an abundant life. Dad, what, is, what does it mean for you to have an abundant life? What does it mean to have an abundant life? Yes, and forever. And forever, right? And to be aware of it and have a grateful heart for it, right? Yeah. What does this fear serve in you? Nothing, really, if you think about it. Nothing. It paralyzes us. It paralyzes us. I want you to make the time and I'm practicing this, and I really want to get good at it, even better than I am, at practicing the presence of God, beginning my day with God, and putting God, remembering God throughout my day. And I also want for you to take an inventory of yourself, what is not of God. Now, this might take away or cut into your TV time or poker time. Uh, shopping time, drinking time, whatever, but make a list of what stops you in life from living life abundantly. And bless that list and ask God to help you move through it. Because God's there in the midst of that craziness. Then I want you to make a list of all the nice things about yourself, all the great things about yourself. And I want for you to be grateful for that because that's what makes you unique and special as part of God's tapestry in life. All of us is a unique thread that moves through life. And we're an awesome picture together. We're an awesome life together. I think that we should be more concerned with our inner life than our outer life. Because if we were more concerned with our spiritual self, our nature, and feeding our nature of God within us, whether it's reading devotions, studying the Bible, uh, not just even reading the Bible. Why don't we start there? Read a story and see where you're at in that story, what character you are in that story. Feed your soul. Feed your soul. We've talked about this before. You, we feed our bodies three times a day, if not more. So why don't we feed our souls three times a day or if not more? Okay. You and I are worthy to have the abundance. 
we are worthy to have the riches, the wealth of the kingdom. We don't have to wait until we die. The kingdom is already inside. We got to pull it forth. We got to build the consciousness. Oh, yeah, it's here. And when we pray, just say, God, you know, we, we all have a habit of going, oh, God, I want this, this, this. God is not our errand boy or girl. Let's begin there. And second of all, we need to recognize maybe God has something better plans for us than we think is good for us or that we want. Yeah. So make some spiritual goals. I'll tell you the truth. I am so tired of hearing. Write down your goals that you want to achieve. And most of us have these materialistic goals. But yeah, there's a ladder of success in life, and that's great. I'm not taking away from that, folks. I'm really not. But how much more successful would we be and how much quicker our success would come if we work on our ladder of spiritual success? And Working on our ladder of spiritual success is about getting rid of the stuff inside of us that is not of God. That's pretty clear, isn't it? Anger, resentment, unforgiveness. There's a classic. There's a classic. We all got a little bit of that working. And it, we need to get rid of the unforgiveness and begin with yourself. I truly believe that if I truly forgiven myself wholly and completely that everybody that I hold a grudge or that I might still have anger towards would dissolve. Why? Because I'm at one with them. Something that I'm angry about in them exists in me. Other than I, otherwise I wouldn't recognize it, would I? It's just that simple. You know, it's simple spiritual laws, but they are very difficult to work because we're impatient as human beings. We want what we want when we want it. And it's usually yesterday. And if you can make it today, it'll be so much better, wouldn't it? Get rid of the ugliness. That's what I call it in me. You don't have to call it the, the, the ugliness in you. You find your own word if you want. But it's my ugliness that covers up my life, my shadows that cover up my life, which is my negative thinking. We have to weed the garden of our heart. There is a scripture that says, God created me a pure heart your soul our light would get brighter people go god there's something different about you and it's not your makeup you know do you understand what i'm saying there's a light that begins to beam from you there's an energy that emanates from you remember people follow jesus's energy a lot of them maybe never even saw his face Bring love, bring faith, bring hope, and bring love, faith, and wisdom with you. It's already there inside of you. Allow yourself to call it forth. And here's something. I know that I don't do enough of it because I still sigh a lot. I stop my breathing. I just hold my breath. Not consciously. And I know I'm not the only one in this room that does that. Because then all of a sudden I hear myself go. And my friend says to me, what's wrong? I go, I just, 
I, I had to restart my breathing again. Okay. I didn't get this pretty overnight. I got a lot more pretty to go, folks. And so do you, okay? Let your light shine. Let it come through, you know? Give up what doesn't work in your life. Give up anything that is not of God's nature. You know, just sit down, be in the stillness, be in the silence, focus on your breathing. It will relax your body. It will release the stress and the tension that we have in our body. We don't like carrying around that heavy emotional luggage, do we? I don't. I want to know why I'm so tired at the end of the day. Well, you know, I got a backpack full of stuff, if you know what I mean, that needs to get rid of. We want to be able to come sensitive to the vibration of God coming in and through us as us. It's like, you know, a rippling out effect. You know, envision the Christ light within you and just seeing it ripple out, emanate out, touching, being. What do you think Jesus did? I came to show you the way. He said, come follow me. I bet you he meant, come be like me. Because he came to show us the way. And really, in reality, he wants us to be like him. So I'm really sorry that some churches have given Jesus a bad rap. And, you know, we got to get rid of it. We, we, we got to get rid of it. Find a new image of your Jesus. Because really, Jesus was God with flesh on it. And if you cannot accept Jesus as God with flesh on it, how are you going to accept yourself as the spirit of God with flesh on it? Have I made my point? Does this show you new ways of building your, your intimacy with God? Talk to God as your best friend. Sometimes when I'm driving and I pretend like Jesus is sitting in the, in the seat next to me, I go, Jesus, I'm sorry, but that guy's an idiot. And he laughs. I can see him laughing. You'll get through it one day. You'll get through it one day. We all do, sooner or later. Let's not wait until we're on our deathbed. That's all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying. Christ likes us. Christ loves us. Christ adores us. God loves us. God adores us. God wants us to have a, more of a deeper relationship. God is sitting inside of us. The spirit of God is sitting inside of us, waiting for us to take the time to sit down and to breathe and to feel the rhythm of the silence and to feel the rhythm of God's energy inside of us. For we were made in the image and likeness of God. So the energy of God is within us. The way that we come in contact with that rhythm, with that experience that we're all seeking in life right now is when we get still. Peace be still and know that I am God. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Beth. I invite you to just sit in your chairs and allow yourself to just let go. To just let go. To say to yourself, I, I, I surrender to the presence of God that is in this building and in this place and within me. I surrender God.
My true desire is to know you better, to experience you more and to see you more in my life. And I can't do that, God, if I don't surrender my will and my life over to you. So right now, I take a few moments to just surrender. I surrender. I surrender. My desire to God is to feel you and to know you as the living spirit within you. Jesus, help me. You've done it. You have achieved it. We call you our way, Shirley. You are our comfort. Come comfort us, Lord. What's the word going on? Assist us in practicing with your presence. Assist us. And being our authentic spiritual self. Feel that breath. For it is the breath of the Holy Spirit. We give thanks to you, dear God, for all the goodness in our lives. We ask you to put a healing bomb upon our hearts, to heal our hurts and pains. We ask you, dear God, to take the blinders off our eyes, our spiritual eyes, so that we may see you more and more. More action you at work. We say thank you, God, for answered prayer, for guiding us, directing us, and inspiring us in your presence, going before us, and making our way easy, joyous, successful, productive, and prosperous, and wealthy, and perfect. We choose to live life abundantly. Assist us in how to do that. Could you do me a favor and jump one forward one slide? And share that. Thank you, Reverend Patty. Oh, I'm supposed to get up and talk on this stuff after that. <laughs> I want to stay sitting in the 
in the silence and in the message. Oh, thank you. And we have part three yet next month. Is that correct? Okay. Another part on that. So I'd like all of you to prepare your tithes and offerings for us. And for those who are online or those who prefer even here, there are other ways to contribute to us. You can send it through the US mail. You can go directly onto the website or you can go through PayPal. And the information is on our slides at this point. So we want us to get that ready. And even those at home, if you would take your offerings in your hands, that we all bless them as a community going forward. And then we'll go back to our offering prayer. We'd say that all together. There is no lack or limitation. Freely I give and freely I receive from God's abundance. I am blessed as I give and unity is blessed in receiving. Thank you, God. And we'll have Susan come back up and give us some more music, please. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> Let the other yeah, yeah. You know, I came from across the border. So, uh, and, I, and I want you to know that I really love this church. I've been coming here for years and years and years as a guest speaker, have I not? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I love coming here. And I want for people to give with a free heart. Monthly, I send a tithe, part of a tithe check here because that's how much I believe in this church. You guys need a new roof. You know what? We need to put that on the prayer list. Oh, nobody <laughs> told me. <laughs> we need a parking lot. Okay, so now we are praying for a parking lot. And you know why I love the church? I just want to say this real quick and then I'll shut up and sit back down. Is because you guys do believe in the unity teachings, what Charles and Myr Myrtle Fillmore taught. That's why I love this church. And I hope your next minister or multiple ministers, whatever you're going to get, wherever this church is destined for, that they teach the Charles and Myrtle Fillmore teachings because they are powerful beyond measure. If I did not practice those teachings, I would not be here today because I would be dead. Thank you. Okay. Um, I always bring a bunch of songs and then I try to sing things that match what we talk about. So there's this line that, that Patty Pippi lady said, something about watering a garden. You said something about garden in the first thing, okay? There's a line in this song that says, I'll just water the garden. I'll just stay close by. I'll just water the garden. Look at that beautiful sky. That reminded me that that's about us watering the garden that's going on. God makes it grow. All we gotta do is just put a little water in. Okay, here we go. It's called Brand New Hammock. Because what makes me happy is <laughs> a hammock in my backyard. <laughs> There's a brand new hammock swinging in my backyard. And a cool September breeze dancing in my heart. Well, I'll just water the garden and I'll just stay close by. Well, I'll just water the garden look at that beautiful sky why look at that beautiful sky well, there's a brand new hammock swinging from a young oak tree there's a breeze coming through my heart and i'm feeling free well i'll just water the garden and i'll just stay close by <clears throat> excuse me now <clears throat> Here. Oh, where'd he go? Here it goes. <clears throat> I'll just water the garden and look at that beautiful sky. 
I look at that beautiful sky. Now there's something in the garden I've never seen before. It's a little wildflower finding a place to grow. And maybe all it needs is sunshine. Maybe all it needs is love. Add a little gentle rainfall. Let's see what the season's about. Let's see what the season's about. Cause there's a brand new hammock swinging in my backyard. And the cool September breeze dancing in my heart. Happiness writes a new song. Singing with a heart so light. Sitting out on my back porch. And everything's feeling just right. Oh, everything's feeling just right. So I'll just water the garden And I'll just stay close by I'll just water the garden And look at that beautiful sky Why look at that beautiful sky Just look at that beautiful sky Thanks. Thank you again, Susan. You want to play over the gift? Yeah. Thank you. They from their hearts, they gave with love. They gave because they believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ. I ask that you bless them abundantly. May their lives prosper in ways that they never saw before. I ask this in and through the power of Jesus Christ, and so it is. Amen. Now I get to do everybody's favorite part, right? <laughs> anybody remember that old camp? Anybody go to camp? You know, announcements, announcements, announcements. Yeah, I think of that every time, you know? So, all right. So we have lots going on, of course, at um, Unity Center in Milwaukee. And next week, our lesson will come from our own Reverend Joanne Bauman, and it is on God's kingdom with him. I have to move a little bit out of the camera's out in the way. So um, we look forward to hearing Joanne. Our uh, Unity book study, our minister's book study is continuing on the book of hope um, by Jane Goodall and Douglas Abrams. That's Thursdays from 9.30 to 11, either in person or virtually. Strong book. It really is. Um, and we can all use a little more hope, right? So, and you don't have to be here every week. You know, you can get the book. It is available online for those that want to do um, a Kindle version, um, or you can get order the hard copy. It's both available through Amazon. You can join us there. Immediately following that is our Silent Unity prayer service at 11 o'clock. Again, if you don't make the book study, you're able, able to jump on or come in for the prayer service. They do pray over those prayers. They pray over a, a same thing that Unity Center, or excuse me, Unity Worldwide prays through their silent unity practice. Um, and that's a monthly sheet. It's very laid back and very extensive covering everything. You're welcome to join that again in person or, or otherwise. Um, our labyrinth is back in the classroom. You're free to Walk that as you will. We ask you to take off your shoes. There are some instructions there. Basically, the simple part is there's something that's on your mind that you want to focus on going in, looking for God's answers, looking for how to handle something, but coming back out with that energy, thanking God for having answered prayers or answered thoughts. But it's a great way to continue our spiritual development. 
again, it's before service, you come in a little bit early. Uh, somebody's usually here by nine o'clock. There's lots of time if you wanna come in early before service or you're welcome to do it afterwards. And the center is open beyond our little fellowship. So um, Joanne is usually here doing Course in Miracles. Uh, starting about 1145. So if, again, you think, oh, I want to do fellowship. And then I want to do that. You're welcome to do that, right, Kevin? I think they're welcome to stay um, for that time. So if you want to take your time to yourself and still do fellowship, you're welcome to do that. And again, for those who are here, we do have coffee, tea, usually um, some snacks. And you're welcome to join us after service of that. And then go into Course in Miracles if you want. Um, it is teaching uh, the teachings, focusing on the principles of universal love and forgiveness. And of course, like most places, we have a website. We want to make sure we visit that periodically. So any of those who might be looking for the particular teachings we have, the particular energy we have here, you know, it pops up when somebody does a search. So please go over there take a look at the bulletin board, take a look at the inspiring insights, maybe review the message from this week or any of the, the previous weeks. Those uh, videos are all there for us. And it is unicenterinmilwaukee.com. So please visit that. We have Life Journey Group that continues every second and fourth Mondays from 6.30 to 8.15 in the evening. I always want to have uh, tomorrow. There you go. That's right. I, I'm not even thinking of because we have that fifth week, it kind of throws some things this month as to what things are. So I keep, oh, that is not in the morning. I'm thank God it's not in the morning when I see the slide. So it is in the evening after work, you know, um, run home, grab your dinner, take it to work, take your dinner to work with you or come on in then and join the Life Journey group. It's, uh, as I understand, a fairly laid back uh, group, just kind of talking through life. And all you need is an open mind and a warm heart. Are there warm hearts in this place? Absolutely. Okay, all right. So then everybody's invited and welcome. Uh, we do need volunteers to keep this place going. And we're gonna need those, whether there is a physical minister up here or not. Um, because, you know, we are a community. We wanna be able to work together and not just be here on Sundays, but there's lots of things that keep us going. Um, need some greeters for services, kitchen help, gardening. Uh, Sandy's doing an awesome job trying to keep our creeping Charlies and the other crazy weeds out of the garden. Um, she could use a hand on that. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, five minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, anything you can offer, get a hold of Diane, that lovely lady back there who just raised her hand sitting next to our screen, uh, or send her an email. You know, uh, there's things that can be done during the week, you know, after work, before work, whatever. She'll figure, if, if you've got a talent you want to share, we'll find a place for you. And I think that's pretty much the end of it. So we are not singing out loud. And y'all, I think y'all are getting to know exactly what I'm thinking of us doing here because we've been doing it the last couple of times I've done the podium. We will stand and we're not gonna, we're not gonna do a circle. Are you, are you okay with a circle, Kevin? Okay, we'd like to do a circle, but from the front out to the sides so that we are singing our energy of peace and joy and understanding out into the world from our center here, passing it through the center and out into the world. So if we join in a circle, please. And we will think and sing, uh, mouth sync the words to the peace song. And we will not join hands. Yep, so those of you there, we turn on the, turn for the outside energy. Look at this. We got, we almost we almost do a full circle. Wow. Look at all these people in here. We almost could have done a full circle today. <laughs> <laughs>